Hey, welcome back to the Make Space Boring Show. I've got Dr. Andy Aldrin here, and we're going to talk about what happened over the summer at uh, Florida Institute of Technology slash uh, International Space University, where they've got a great certificate program on space entrepreneurship. Uh, guests of my show have been through this program, I think, of Eldridge Dumello uh, right off the oh, bat. Oh, yeah, you had and, Eldridge on. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Well, I wanted to find out about how ground station operations worked. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know me, I go straight to uh, the expert or the source, come tell me about it. And it gives me like an instant master's degree in the subject. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, well, I so mean, in many ways, Eldridge is um, emblematic. I'm not going to say the poster child of, of what we did and what happened this summer and all of the good things that happened. But I'm really happy that you had Eldridge on. Right. Well, yeah, let's talk about it for a minute. I mean, here's a guy who comes out of Angola. He gets to go uh, to get the Russian training, which uh, is, you know, cut off from a lot of us in the Western world because we're just not allowed, <laughs> you know, um, and and uh, goes to France, gets some um, certification over there and finds out about you. And, and, you know, as COVID came on, what was he doing? He was getting involved and uh, showing up everywhere. I kept seeing him and going... Who is this guy? You know, at the first, uh, you know, is, is he credible? Should I take him seriously in that? And then, uh, you know, finding out, hey, he's a ground station operator and uh, Angle has, you know, one satellite, and and there's lots to learn out of that experience and having him on. It was, and 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 it, and it's, you know, one of the great things is having students, participants coming in mm -hmm. from around the world, and and sharing their experiences. Yeah. You know, one of the, and it's a huge part of learning is, you know, I, I can talk and we can bring in guest lectures and all that kind of stuff, but the most credible source for any student is another student. Mm -hmm. And so we had, we had an, just an amazing group of students this year. And it was, it was all part of, you know, kind of, there's a little bit of COVID serendipity <laughs> that's, that's going on around the world and, and no more, more so nowhere more so than in an education and I think in particular higher education and we're all learning a lot and so um, it also has kind of um, shades of entrepreneurship because mm -hmm. you know I'll, I'll go through the story of our yeah, summer because it really was very much of, of an entrepreneurship story which is that you know um, most entrepreneurs start out with a plan a which may be a perfectly good plan, but mostly it doesn't work out for whatever reason. And they go to plan B and plan C. And we ended up on plan C. You know, plan A for the summer was, first of all, we learned from the first year. The first year we did an entire semester in six weeks, super intensive, but it was just, it was probably the cup overfloweth with information. And so we were gonna stretch it out a couple of weeks and actually give students a couple of weeks to work at home online and, and then bring them to Florida. And we were gonna kind of split time between the visitor complex, which is a great and inspirational location, sometimes not the best place to do lectures and, and certainly not labs. Uh, and, and my office space at Florida Tech, which is the fantastic building, we've got all kinds of room. And that seemed like a great plan. Um, then COVID hit and that was like, you know, whatever, February. And so we weren't sure for at least a month whether we we're gonna be able to do anything. Everything was kind of up in the air. And then we settled on a program um, where we would do a hybrid and we'd do eight weeks online and two weeks at the visitor complex. It seemed like a really good combination and it was a phenomenal idea. Um, COVID wasn't going along, wasn't buying that business plan at all, right? So COVID, COVID said, no, you're not going to Florida. And we ended up running the full 10 week program online, but it worked out really, really well. and it, and there's some lessons in plan C. Uh, I think ultimately plan B is a better plan, but let me get to some of the lessons we got in plan C. One of the great things we learned about being online is that we can get a lot more students with a lot more diversity, mm -hmm. geographic, racial, gender, um, by going online. And, and a big part of it is not only can you geographically come in from every, anywhere, and we had students like Eldridge coming from Africa. We had three students from Africa involved in, with either national space agencies or the, or the sort of pan-African space agency. Um, and, and that was great. We had a handful of students from Europe. Um, and we, we even had a student from Sri Lanka. That was as far as we penetrated into Asia and then students from all over the US. And a big part of it was 
even though it's an intensive program, if you're doing it online, a lot of these students actually held down for full-time jobs, yeah. which I, I'm, you know, when I was younger, maybe I could not do the long days because it does take a long day to really do a full semester of graduate work and work full time. But we had several students do it. And, and the other thing that, that was just so fantastic about it was um, the quality of students we got was great. I mean, we saw so just as an example, one of the classes um, in policy and law, we, we have students write papers on, on various countries, national space innovation system. So we kind of give them a framework a good analytic framework uh, with good academic credentials or you know underpinnings, and they they write and we had papers on and not not surprisingly Eldridge did a paper on Angola, uh, we had a paper on South Africa, we had a paper on you know Italy. A lot of times students are doing papers from their home country. We had somebody doing a paper on the Isle of Man. There were a handful of those papers that. Um, I really need to get my act together and work with students and polish them up a little bit, but are literally peer review journal quality papers. And, mm. and when, when your students are doing stuff like that, it just, it is such a great feeling. Mm -hmm. And so we were getting that quality of work. And, um, you know, one of the things we do in a program on entrepreneurship, not surprisingly, is you have students gather together in teams sort of self-organize and pull together business ideas. And so we've, We've got four groups, which are actually out there going to market and, you know, getting into incubators, looking for money. It's all really early. And they, you know, I'm, I am sure that some of these teams will adjust their business plan, adjust their teams and all of this kind of stuff. And they're not all going to be successful. But I got to tell you, as far as just extending the learning experience, yeah. you know, I get to stay in contact with them and talk them through you know, trying to identify what their real market is and those kinds of things. And, and so it's just, it's absolutely fantastic. The other great thing about going online was, um, as you know, we have a lot of guest lectures. Our first year, I think we had 17 or 18 guest lectures. This, we kind of capped it. At, at, it ended up being 20. It wasn't like we set a number, but after 20, we just, we had to balance the material we want to teach versus bringing people in. And so we got a great group of guest speakers, but the, I think one of the important things was we were able to schedule them, you know, to come in during the week, during the lecture, that's really relevant to what they want to talk about. And so that was a great thing. Um, the only downside of what we did was we, weren't, we didn't go to Florida. We didn't get to see a launch. We didn't get to tour facilities. We didn't get the students, the students did a great job interacting online. And even though, you know, we had uh, 16 students, um, they actually did a great job interacting online, going into chat rooms, you know, spending a lot of time talking to each other in um, offline forums or online forum. And, um, uh, but there's nothing like getting them all together, you know, and actually having group presentations, tours of facilities, watching launches. So what we're doing for this year is uh, we're going to go back to plan B, which is eight weeks online. And so we'll get all of the academic, the, you know, the real pick and shovel work done. And then we'll bring the students together for two weeks in Florida at the visitor complex. And, um, and we'll do tours. We'll do, you know, group presentations. We'll bring in guest speakers. Um, you can't be in Florida for two weeks without a launch. Right. So, you know, it'll be a little bit of um, uh, just luck, frankly, you know, as to what kind of a launch we get. I'm not doesn't look like we're going to get a, a, a Falcon Heavy, which we had for the first year, by the way, we had a night launch of a Falcon Heavy. But at any rate, you know, we'll get together with the people that are coming into town for the launch and all that kind of good stuff. So. Um, so, yeah, we're just starting. Uh, registration has officially opened. If you go to our website, website ISU CSE uh, at Florida Tech, um, you will you can get the information on it. But registration is open. We're raising some money. We're going to be able to afford uh, a number of partial scholarships. We're, typically, we we provide partial scholarships to as many students as we can. Um, and and judging by you know the the letters of interest we've got. Uh, this group may be even better than last year. I don't know. It's, it all seems really impressive. Um, we're super excited. It's, it's basically going to be the same faculty, same courses. So 
Um, I teach a class in policy and law. I teach another class in commercial programs, which is really kind of a market analysis. I don't want to say survey because we dig into, you know, the real ecosystems of the various segments of the space market. Um, and then um, Greg Autry, who um, uh, uh, I, I will say was nominated and, and regrettably for Greg, at least, let's just say um, that nomination didn't get full Senate, did wasn't that Senate never voted on it. Um, and since we have a change of administrations, which I, I just, I'll leave that there, yeah. but it <laughs> means that Greg is, Greg is going to be available for us. So he's going to teach a class on in entrepreneurship, which is always, you know, kind of a foundation for what we do. And then we've got Angie Buckley from Aerospace, a former Dean of ISU teaching technology and systems along with Chris Welch, who is um, the, uh, what is, is Chris is in charge at ISU and he's in charge of all graduate programs at ISU. Uh, great technical teacher. So yeah, same faculty that we've had, slightly different format. Um, and, and, you know, we starting to line up guest speakers, but it's, just, it's gonna be a phenomenal summer. I think we, we learn more and we get better at it every year. So um, yeah, if, if there are folks out there that are interested, contact us, contact me. A Aldrin at fit.edu, and um, and let's let's talk. It is you know the the if I'm not going to try and pump up the program and students' reactions to it, but we do uh, we do have testimonials from students, and um, it's um, it's a really it's been a super positive experience for them. And I'll tell you, you know, compared to teaching my regular engineering management curriculum. Uh, teaching these classes is such a pleasure because the students are just so fired up and they're fired up about space. So yeah, I, I'm excited. Mm -hmm. Well, as, and as am I. For this. Yeah, <laughs> I, uh, I encounter these folks. I mean, they come and they come and they reach out to me. We talk a little bit about job hunt usually, and mm -hmm. uh, I give them some advice because I've had four positions created for me without any competition. Uh, in my history, wow. okay. where I just went and told people what I wanted, and they created the role for me and and funded it. Because um, employers, there's a lot of uh, thinking out there that oh, uh, all I all I can do is apply with a blizzard of resumes to want ads, and uh, you've got far more options. And I tell you, if I see on your resume, for example, uh, that you've been through this program, the uh, you know the ISU Fit program, um, that's a, that's a big plus for me. I, I know that you're going to have your head on straight about money, <laughs> funding, True. customers, right? Uh, and, and value, not just, oh, I have an idea. Let me, let me make this thing, which is right. what we so and, often see out there in the space world. So Yeah, and I mean, I, I should be really clear that this is not uh, a program on space advocacy. It's mm -hmm. really learning, and we force you to ask a lot, a lot of tough questions. And, and the faculty in general, I would say, is almost agnostic as to whether there's really a, a revolution in space right now. I mean, I, I see lots of really, really great signs, yeah. but I also see signs of danger. So, mm -hmm. you know, my spider sense is tingle too. So <laughs> exactly. yeah, you're gonna get um, a hard dose of reality in space and it's a great interaction. You know, we try and do things where we get um, a variety of viewpoints. So one example would be space law, which is mm -hmm. can be a contentious area, right? There, people, space lawyers and people involved in it really line up on two sides. That they're, they're sort of traditional space. I'll say traditional international law, where treaties are really important, and you need to drive this, and the treaties need to be out front. And then you get more of a an economic perspective, if you will, economic legal perspective, which says, you know, let's understand what the issues are before we start writing laws. And, 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 and we get both of them. We bring in yeah. people from different perspectives. I'm not gonna promise who exactly is gonna be there, but we brought people in that clearly had very different perspectives on it. Um, and, you know, in the classroom situation and, and, you know, we do have strict Chatham House rules. You're gonna hear them talk about what they really, what they mm -hmm. really believe. And so we get a diversity of views, it's great. Yeah.
Well, fantastic. Well, this has been Dr. Andrew Aldrin, uh, a huge range of experience. He's been on my show a couple of times. Uh, I'm going to link to those episodes in the description below. The first one we were talking about, um, you know, business development and, and uh, business in space. And he has been a, a, a senior executive at Boeing and, and uh, knows all about that. And also, we talked about uh, his, uh, his thesis, which was about uh, the Soviet development of their space program. And it's a wonderful story, fascinating, about this small cluster of true believers who uh, just persisted through whatever political change was going on and uh, just kept appearing and going, hey, we want to make this, we want to make this, we want to make this, how can we tie this in? And uh, it's, it's very uh, educational. The story of entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. In the least likely place. Very unlikely. That's right. So I'll link to those below. And also, uh, yes, as as, uh, Andy said, connect with him if you want into the program details about the program. Um, This is not a new, a brand new program. Uh, It is proven. Um, It's, it was, this is third iteration that we're talking about. This will be the third year. Yeah. 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 Uh, And I, I've heard wonderful things from it from moment one. (laughs) <laughs> from moment one, you know, like I said, I have students uh, and, and graduates of it who come in and connect with me privately and talk with me. Not everybody gets to be on my show, unfortunately, but, <laughs> but we have we have really great conversations about it. And I know just how valuable it is. Uh, thanks for doing this. Hey, thanks for having me on, Jason. It's always a pleasure.